Hey YouTube, Jimmy here. Once again, we're taking a break from our Dow 30 analysis with a quick investing basics video on WAC, or Weighted Average Cost of Capital. We're looking at how it's calculated and how it can be used effectively. Weighted Average Cost of Capital is often called WAC for short. Basically, WAC is a way to calculate the cost of capital for a company. WAC takes into account the cost of debt, the cost of preferred shares, if the company has any, and the cost of the company's equity. So let's look a bit closer. The formula for calculating WAC looks like this. Although this formula may look a bit long at first, it's actually quite intuitive once you break it down. Before we even tackle the formula, let's walk through a quick example. So let's imagine that company XYZ decides to go out and raise $100,000 to grow their business. They have decided to issue bonds in the amount of $30,000 and then they sell $70,000 worth of equity to get them to the $100,000 that they're looking for. So now they have $100,000 in total market value. So the first question we tackle when looking to calculate WAC is what percentage of that $100,000 is debt and what percentage is equity? Well, the $30,000 in debt divided by the $100,000 in total market value tells us that the debt portion is 30%. And since in this case we have no preferred shares to consider, well, we know that the equity portion is 70%. So now the math is quite simple. Let's imagine that the cost of debt is 4%, and debt is generally quite simple to calculate. What is the interest rate on the debt? In this example, we can say that we only have one bond for $30,000, and therefore we can just use the interest rate we pay on that bond, which we're saying is 4%. Now, to make it even simpler, Many public companies publish their average cost of debt, so you can generally just use what they give you in the footnotes of their financial statements. But for our example, we're going to stick with the 4%. Now jumping over to the cost of equity. Generally, you would have to use something like the capital asset pricing model to come up with the cost of equity. And that's a whole different calculation. And we recently published a video on the capital asset pricing model. So if you're interested in seeing how to come up with it, you can jump over to that video. But for this example, Let's just assume that the cost of equity is 10%. Generally, the cost of equity is going to be higher than the cost of debt since equity shareholders bear more risk than bondholders. And therefore, equity holders demand a higher rate of return than debt holders. This can be thought of as what the equity investor expects the company to return for them. So let's slide back over to the formula. So as you may notice, there are two primary letters. W stands for weight and R stands for the percentage cost. Often, it's called the required rate of return, hence the letter R. So the WD stands for the weight of the debt. We know that's 30%. The RD stands for the cost of debt. We know that's 4%. So I'm going to skip this 1 minus T for now. I'll come back to that in a second. WP is the weight of the preferred shares. RP is the cost of the preferred shares. We don't have any preferred shares right now, which makes this whole section zero. And here, E, for equity, we have 70% weight and 10% required rate of return. Okay, so jumping back to the debt for a second. This 1 minus T. T stands for tax rate. As you can see, this only applies to the debt because debt has a unique feature of usually having interest payments that are tax deductible. The 4%, well, that's an expense. But that expense is before taxes. So if their tax rate is 25%, then you take 1 minus t, where t is 0.25, which is a 25% tax rate, and you end up with 0.75. This is the tax adjustment you're making to the cost of debt. So for our example, after accounting for the tax benefits of debt, this makes the cost of debt just 3%. So as you can see, this formula is not terribly difficult. And at the end of the day, WAC tells you the minimum amount a company needs to return. The company can use this as a way to determine if they should invest in a project. So if company XYZ calculates their WAC to be the same 7.9% we calculated, and they find a project that's going to return an estimated 6%, well, they shouldn't do it. They would be destroying wealth of the company, since the capital they will be using would be costing them 7.9%, and they would be earning 6%. But if on the flip side, they thought the project would earn 17.9%, well, they should probably do that, since they would be creating wealth as the cost of capital would be 7.9% and they'd be earning 17.9%. And to see how much of an impact this can have from a company perspective, 
Well, the company ends up with a 10% return. That means for every dollar the company invests in the project, 10 cents in wealth will be created for the company. Another good use of WAC is to use it as a discount factor in discounted cash flow or some similar valuation technique. And it works very similar to the way a company would use it. So using the WAC we calculated of 7.9%, well, we can use that number to discount expected cash flows to see what they are worth today. So if cash flows are expected to be $1 million in two years for a company we are considering investing in today, well, that $1 million in two years is worth $858,929 today. Let's pretend that the company we are looking at has 10,000 shares outstanding. Divide this by 10,000 and you get a present value of $85.89 per share. Well, if our expectations are correct about future cash flows, this is what the stock should be worth today. Let's pretend that the stock is trading at just $60 a share. Well, it could be undervalued and we can consider buying it. But if instead the stock is trading at $100 a share, Perhaps it is overvalued, and we should find a different opportunity for our hard-earned money. So that's the basics of weighted average cost of capital and how it can be used. If you made it this far in the video, I hope you found it useful, and if you have any comments, questions, or general thoughts, please post them in the comments below, and if you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.